Hello guys, welcome to the Retro Guy blog or channel. So today I want to talk a little bit about this little guy here, well this big guy here. So uh, you've saw, you have seen it on my other videos and I actually uh, just saw it, you know, like standing there and I said, you know what, I'm going to start working on it. And uh, basically I started it. Uh, following up some videos on the net, I was able to fully disassemble this guy. So focus is hard to be established here. Okay, so there we go. Uh, I followed a lot of videos on the net in order to disassemble this guy fully. It is not easy. This is really like tough to fully disassemble because of all the shelves, aluminum shelves that are inside. This is the result right here. Of course, this is only the parts that I'm going to be using. So here we have the shelves, uh, the cable organizers, and uh, the, the disk drive uh, shelves as well, and some other parts. Uh, all the fans are there as well, already cleaned. And uh, the insides, after we finish this, looks basically like this. It's pretty much like an empty shell, of course. And uh, it looks beautiful, as you can see, this is pure aluminum, and uh, it has been washed already, and uh, it's really ready to go. So next step will be to basically get rid of those standoffs that you see there. Uh, so I'm going to basically remove each one of those, and I'm going to follow the idea of uh, gluing them with epoxy. I think it's uh, better like that to uh, accommodate an ATX motherboard. So accommodating the ATX should be easy enough. Uh, the difficult step will be basically to cut this portion here to basically uh, be, uh, to, to suit the, the I.O. of the new ATX board that is going to be placed there. Um, in terms of the PCI, I think it, this, uh, this is okay. Like from the videos I saw, there is not, not much to be done there. It's mainly like the uh, I.O portion that needs to be adapted because of course it does not it's not going to match the holes here that we have for the previous uh, G5 motherboard so I initially my idea was really like to uh, keep this guy and uh, eventually just like original as much original as I could but the thing is uh, I opened it up it was a lot of parts missing for example no memory no disk uh, I uh, what else no battery as well. So there was a lot of uh, stuff that was missing here. Uh, apparently the power supply wasn't working as well. I tried to plug it in, nothing happened. And uh, I really didn't want to go through all the, the burden, you know, of uh, reviving this guy because in the end, I would probably not use it anyways. So uh, I just stripped everything out um, and I'm going to replace it with an ATX board with like probably like a Pentium 7 or a Pentium, an i7 or, or something like that. Uh, I don't know, maybe for like creating like a gaming machine for my son or something like that. It, it might be a nice project, a nice uh, a birthday gift for him when it comes to the time. Uh, one challenge that I had uh, besides the cutting and everything else that I will still do is uh, adapting the the supply, the power supply. So some people, they don't care. They just use like an ATX uh, power supply and put it in the shelf here. But for that, you have to basically cut a hole here to uh, basically make this work so that you can come to the mains and, uh, and power it up. I wanted to keep it a little more original. So I just followed uh, what some guys basically did, which is basically... Uh, using the carcass of uh, the previous power supply, which was huge. I just stripped out and removed all the elements from the inside and I replaced it with an ATX uh, 650 watts uh, power supply. So this is the end result. I'm using the actual fans on the original Power Mac uh, power supply. I actually kept them because uh, after cleaning everything up, it actually looked really good. Uh, it is not uh, a lot of noise or anything like that, and it really works well in terms of uh, uh, airflow. And unfortunately, I already closed it, but uh, the inside here is just like a very small uh, 
ATX power supply so you have to find a low profile one that can actually fit here you have to disassemble it then there is some soldering that you need to do in order to um, basically solder uh, the the mains here to the ins internal components and uh, well in my case the first attempt uh, it actually blew up <laughs> because I forgot to isolate uh, the top here and uh, the problem was the um, uh the the heat uh dissipators you know from the from the power supply actually touched the metal case here and uh, of course it blew the 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 fuse and not only this one but the fuse of my house as well and uh and only after i opened it up again that i saw that there was a huge um mark here where exactly there was the contact uh from the heat dissipator with uh, the case so if you're going to do something like that, don't do my mistake. What I had to do afterwards is uh, basically curving the heat dissipator a little bit so that it doesn't touch. And on top of that, I actually glued together here using like a heat gun, a huge piece of thick plastic so that uh, this doesn't happen again, right? So it's working now. As you can see, the cables here are all ATX cables. So and you can see there that basically the test that I did with the uh, just uh, power it on the power supply using this uh, little short here. And uh, so I'm actually going to power it up so you guys can hear. So this is basically the two fans pinning up. Interestingly enough, like this power supply starts very slow, as you can see, you almost don't hear any noise. And then uh, little by little, it starts basically getting faster and faster and uh, up to a point where uh, the airflow gets really really nice and and cool so that should work beautifully uh, i'm not going to install that yet into the case because i still have to cut uh, the back of the case to accommodate the new io board so i still have to do that before i start uh, rebuilding everything and placing the motherboard and everything else so still like uh, some hard work to be done this is only the very beginning, but I'm very satisfied with uh, the power supply, how it came out. So this is the original case of the power supply. It looks really original, like um, no holes or no nothing. So as you can see, the fan is already starting to spin up a little bit faster. But uh, yeah, it, it uh, I'm very happy with this so far and very happy with uh, how the case actually came along after the cleaning as well. Like it looks beautiful. And um, this particular, um, uh, this particular case I got it um, where I think it was almost a year ago like a guy was selling it for about 10 quid I actually went to pick it up and it, it was it was in my garage since then like I never touched it again so it was very very dusty so it was really hell you know to clean everything up uh, there was like uh, at least four spiders dead inside and uh, all sorts of you know like uh, uh dust bunnies and yeah it was really nasty but uh yeah it's very clean now and uh ready to go so yeah that's it guys so that's uh that's what we have for today so this is going to be my new project so stay tuned and uh i will keep updating as soon as i go i didn't uh documented the whole stripping out of the power power mac g5 or even like the uh, the power supply here just because there is a lot of videos on the net of people who had already done it and uh, what's you know like it's just going to be one more so I really didn't have the the patience to actually go and, and documented it but it is done it works and I'm very satisfied with the results so hopefully I will uh, move on with this project soon enough by cutting the case the back of the case and uh, and we go from there okay so stay tuned. Bye.